Thank you, nice to see you too. Um, yeah, we've had a really positive week so far, so far so good. Um, it's always nice when we get back together, you know, we've only been away for um, a short amount of time, but it's nice to see the girls again, uh, get the group together and just really looking to um, continue the momentum from the previous two camps, so all, um, all good so far. Every camp I've been able to say to you all, and no key injuries, but obviously for this one, you're without Rachel Rowe, you're without Hannah Kane. Obviously, as a manager, you've got to deal with these problems, but obviously Rachel Rowe in particular has been a very key player for you. Yeah, I think one of the things um, about the team is we knew when we were planning for this World Cup campaign that we'd have to be adaptable. So whilst it was nice in our first couple of press conferences to talk about no major injuries, um, we were prepared for this. You know, I think we showed that on the last camp with players who are ready to step into positions. Um, so it's really nice to be able to utilise the whole team and make sure that we can be um, competitive in all of the games because every single player in this campaign will play a part. And we've always spoke about that. So now it's time for, for those players to do that. And we did it really well in the last camp. Two very different tests ahead. What do you expect from Greece? Yeah, I think, um, like you said, two very different tests, so two different uh, sets of preparation in terms of our mentality. So what we've seen from Greece so far is they've got some really good strengths in possession. Um, they've got some good players, you know, particularly um, Sari, who plays for Birmingham in the WSL, knowing a little bit about her and then watching their previous games. We can see they've got some real qualities. Um, and then we can see they've got some areas that we want to try and exploit. And that's what we've been doing this week. We've been looking at how we build on our team performance, but then how we can exploit the opposition as well. Is the key kind of trying to play at the same levels as you ended that Estonia game? Because the, the form, final 10 minutes especially, you looked so, so strong. Yeah, for us, it's uh, the focus is always about being better at being us. And that's something that we're constantly setting our standards, setting our expectations against ourselves. So although we know a little bit about Greece, the, the measure will be very much on how we perform and, you know, the focus will be to build on that consistently. And you have some nice, I mean, you've alluded to it before, but you have some nice selection dilemmas across the pitch as well. But I guess from a managerial point of view, that's what you've been striving for. Yeah, it's, um, it's one of the early messages that we spoke about with the team around how we get to a place where it is competitive so that when, you know, you're starting in this team, you're looking behind you to see who's trying to take your shirt. So that's the environment that we're continuously trying to encourage. Um, and, and I find myself in that position now, which is, like you said, it's a great position. Will there need to be an element of, obviously an early goal would be a lovely thing, but will there need to be an element of patience tomorrow night? Because obviously you need to win the game. You want to win the game, but it, you know, it's not going to be, it's not going to be straightforward. No, you know, we, um, in terms of our mindset, we prepare for every game the same. Um, we, we know what we need to know about Greece. And that element of patience will come into it because, you know, we know that um, whether we get the early goal or whether we score goals late, that we want to continue to be the same throughout the whole game. So that mentality about being ruthless is something that we want to do from the first minute to the last minute in games. I don't want to talk too much about France. I'm sure you don't either because all your focus is on the first game. But obviously we alluded to before, it's going to be a very different kind of challenge. You hope in those games you had at the beginning of your reign, the tough friendlies against Denmark and Canada, that they'll stand you in good stead because obviously the higher the calibre of opposition, in theory, the better. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we want to we want to play against higher rank opposition and that's why we did that in the friendlies because we can learn quickly from it. And I think the France game, like you said, every game in this campaign is different. Um, when we get to that game, we can talk more about what that means for us. But for sure, all our experiences um, pre the campaign and during the campaign will, will set us up for both of these games. And just finally, Gemma, a message on the crowd, because again, ticket sales are positive, over 4,000 sold. Obviously, you've switched venues, so you maybe wouldn't expect another record crowd, but positive that, again, we're talking in good numbers for, for a home international. Yeah, it's, um, it's one of the most positive things for us as a team, so as staff and players. You know, we're working really hard to um, make sure that we can do the right things on the pitch and that the fans can get behind us. Uh, for me, attending the men's fixtures in the last couple of weeks and seeing the power of the red wall and then the red wall in the Estonia game for us in the last game, to double those attendance figures, you know, it's, it's huge for us and um, they will help us to be successful. Um, the girls know, the staff know, and there's so much hard work that goes on here behind the scenes from a staff point of view, from a player point of view, because we know 
what the fans mean to us and we want to bring them with us every step of the way because they do help us to win games. Um, I'm excited because the noise the last time we played um, at the stadium was so loud. So to think that's doubled, um, it's just so exciting and they're, they're such an important part of what we do. Lovely. Thanks, Jeremy. Best of luck. See you tomorrow. Thanks, Michael. See you soon. Jeff Michael, uh, Beth Fisher for ITV. Hi, Jeremy. All right. Hi, Beth. Um, listen, you're you almost halfway through this campaign. I just wanted to kind of get your thoughts on how much you've enjoyed it and the challenges, really, given it's been you know an incredible eight months for you and the team. Yeah, for sure. I've enjoyed every minute of it. Um, it's um, it has been a whirlwind though, because you know for you just to say that we're nearly you know we're going to be over halfway through the campaign. Um, I think I'm definitely going to need a lay down in December for sure. Um, but right now we're just excited to be here. I'm excited. Um, it's exciting to work with a group of players and staff we have here because you can see the momentum and the drive and their passion. And that takes us every camp in a step in the right direction. Um, so when I first started in this role, one of the things I wanted to do was make sure we could get the best out of the players, both in and out of possession. And I think our playing identity has developed, which is so exciting. Um, but who we are as people as well and developing that identity as a team has continued to grow. Two, two crucial games, obviously Greece first, and, and they can't really, you know, despite the fact that they're leaking goals, they shouldn't be underestimated, should they? No, you can never underestimate any opposition. We all know that. We all have watched too many football matches to underestimate anyone. So in terms of what we want to do in our prep, it's all about our standards and every moment of every game always is, you know, when we change things in the game at half time, what we talk about off the pitch is all about how we deliver because ultimately it doesn't matter who we play. And obviously back um, internationally as well. I know, obviously you had. I think I, I know we had crowds before, but it was the big, you know, big one down there. Just um, wondering if you've got friends and family. Are they are they making the trip again on a Friday? You know, Beth, I'd love to say they are, but um, my sister booked my mum a trip to London, so they're currently going to London. So they're that's taken priority in my family. My dad's actually working. Uh, my partner Charlie will be heading down. That's about the only committed member of family that I have this time. All right. Well, we won't talk too much about that. And if you wouldn't mind, um, just a question, just away from. Wales, there's been, you know, just around kind of uh, the protection of players, obviously another coach has been sacked in America, we know that the UK has its issues as well, you've been around the women's game a lot, we know that it's not just football, do you feel the biggest issue and the biggest thing to fix within women's sport is this element of making it so that women and girls are protected within those teams, and I hope you don't mind me answering this, feel free to say move on if you wish. No, absolutely. I think, you know, um, people feeling like they can be safe is, is absolutely key and that the protection for staff and players is something that we're really passionate about here. I think, you know, it's fair to say that women's football is on a journey from kind of an amateur place to professionalism. Are we there yet? No. So I think there's a whole lot of education that can take place. And I think it's recognising where we are in our journey, what education needs to be in place. So ultimately, players and staff are protected. Absolutely. Thank you for answering that. Listen, good luck tomorrow. Thanks, Beth. You got an England shirt on. It, you know what? It's Chelsea, but don't tell Neats because I. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking that better not be a lioness. <laughs> oh, listen, yeah, you see, if you see me in one of those, you know I've been kidnapped. Well, I thought I was just checking you were okay. <laughs> Cheers, Beth. Um, Sean Ed, do you know one from Scotland? Hi, you're Gemma. Just a couple from me, if that's okay. That was quite funny. <laughs> um, just, you know, Beth touched on it, you know, it'll be the last um, last two games in this calendar year. But in terms of um, the campaign, almost at the halfway point, are you happy with where Wales are at? You know, unbeaten, scoring lots of goals. I guess you couldn't have asked any more from your players. Yeah, really happy. You know, we wanted to we wanted to take each game a game at a time and a step by step. Um, and that's what we've done. So we have to be happy with that. We have to be happy with the fact that we've. We've done that um, after each game. We've looked into the detail of what we can do better next time. I think the Estonia games are a real great example of how we've done that. To play the team, you know, we did twice in three weeks to be able to see the improvements and be able to execute them, you know, from the away game to the home game is a real sign of this team's mindset in terms of their wanting to learn, their competitiveness. And we're all really focused on what we're here to do. Um, and that's one of the, the nicest things about working with the group is that they're so focused on, on what the goal is and so far so good. You mentioned what you'd like to do better. What would you like to see from your team over these next two games? Yeah, we want to we want to consistently develop our identity. So from an in-possession point of view, we want to put a stamp on that. We want to raise the standards even more than we already have from the first minute to the last minute. So, you know, not nothing is ever really good enough. And that's the kind of attitude that we have in training this week. It's been the same 
our expectations are constantly rising and and that's the group that we want to be uh, we're growing and from an out of possession point of view we want to make sure that we're really building on those foundations that were in place at the beginning um, and making sure we get the blend of both of those we spoke with sophie and there were a lot of questions in terms of the midfield with her and harad and jess because that midfield i think for me has been sort of one of the strongest aspects of of this side as a coach how pleasing is it to see the three of them you know really gelling and really causing havoc against some oppositions yeah absolutely it's so pleasing and i think that you know the strengths that we have in this team those three in particular playing in that midfield is an absolute priority for us in terms of putting players in their best um best positions but then letting them express themselves within a structure so we've talked about that freedom within a structure and those three players need that freedom you know it's not about uh, telling them where to pass and when to pass because that's something that you know they're incredible at um, and to have them continuing to develop as that midfield three game by game you know we're hopeful that's going to continue to get stronger and just finally for me it's been a big week for Jess Fishlock being named MVP with Carrie Jones signing her first pro contract Esther Morgan scoring her first goal for Spurs so you know, as the first team coach, seeing the girls do so well for their clubs as well, you know, what does that do for the national side? Yeah, it gives us, um, you know, it gives me a lot of confidence. Um, it shows how much these girls are dedicating themselves to their club and then, you know, bringing that form here. Um, you know, th there's a long list, um, you know, for us, we, we appreciated some of the things that happened in the three weeks that from October to now, and that list gets even longer. And for us as a team, we want to recognise that because that's something that, um, you know, the girls are managing really well at the minute. So to have them here on the back of all that, you know, success um, is fantastic for us. See you off, Gemma. Good luck tomorrow. See you off. Well, see you off, Sean, Ed. Um, I think that's everyone there now. So thanks again for today. We'll get the footage sent out to you within the next hour or two. Oh, sorry, I just see Penny. Put your hand up. Yeah, sorry. I was just a bit of a late one. Oh, hi, Gemma. How are you doing? Hello, good, thank you. You? Um, yeah, all right, thanks. I got a bit of a delay with my Wi-Fi, so um, sorry about that. I just wanted to ask about players like Chloe Ball, Rian Cleverly, because the cat, the squad has been quite stable for a long time, and there are some players that have been putting in some good performances in the championship. I just wondered, you know, how much they're going to be able to challenge for positions. You've talked about challenging from within the camp itself, you know, who's going to be on the pitch, but also just to get in that squad, really. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. For, for us, so over the last um, four to six weeks, as well as the, the camps that we've been on, uh, we've been looking at our talent ID structure. So really utilising um, what we have in the association. You know, the men's side of talent ID is something that this association really prides itself on. So I've been working with the head of talent ID and saying, OK, how can we build this now and, and expand it for the women's team? Um, so I actually have a meeting the first week of December December to look at that kind of talent identification and start to map out our players um, and have a real strategy around that. And that's not just a strategy for right now, it's a strategy for the long term, you know, of the team. Um, so I'm really excited and looking forward to doing that. Um, we've had um, on the back of that as well in the short term, we have had scouts out of games. So we have a, a scouting network, uh, so a weekly meeting uh, that we have at the moment. And that scouting network is out at championship games. That includes the staff that we have here as well. So myself, the assistant coach. Um, the goalkeeper coach, Lauren, we're, we're kind of planning that on a weekly basis. I would love that to become more of a longer term strategy because it's absolutely a priority for us. Brilliant. Thank you. That's all. Yeah. Cheers yeah. and good luck as well. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we'll, um, we'll end the call there.